a pacifier, a soother, a dummy, a bobo, there's lots of names for them. And if you're wondering whether or not a pacifier is helpful, you're in the right spot, because that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hey there, everyone. I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm the creator of the Helping Babies Sleep Method. I'm a chiropractor by training, but really found my passion, empowering parents just like you to teach their little ones to sleep and parent confidently day and night as a sleep consultant. And pacifiers, are they helpful? Well, in the newborn stage, they can absolutely be very helpful. Pacifiers allow for what we call non-nutritive sucking, meaning they're sucking, but they're not having any nutrition from it. And we know that little ones do this as early as in the fetal stage in the womb. Lots of people have pictures of their little ones sucking their thumb on ultrasound. And sucking the thumb is a primitive reflex that can happen. And it allows for the release of endorphins from the brain. Endorphins make you feel good. You also get them after you exercise. Sucking allows for relaxation. It provides comfort and security. And it can be a helpful tool to encourage sleep. It also can lower the incidence of SID, sudden infant death syndrome, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics although they don't know why exactly, which is interesting. Eventually, little people can use sucking as a way to soothe themselves, whether it's from a pacifier, a thumb, um, or a nipple. So what are the pros and cons? And we're going to dive into those in particular here. So the pros are that it can offer a temporary distraction. If it's feeding time and you can't quite make it happen just now, a pacifier can help tide them over um, until you're able to offer the food. It can also be comforting for babies that have GI issues that might include reflux or food sensitivities because when you are sucking it actually allows the smooth muscle in your intestine to actually contract and push your food through your intestine a little bit. So babies with food sensitivities or GI issues um, will want to suck on something to help ease that. That can be very helpful. Now the cons. Well, the one big one from a sleep consultant perspective is that a lot of kids become dependent on it. It can sometimes be called a sleep crutch, something external that your little one relies on to help them fall asleep. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. It's just if that way of falling asleep becomes unsustainable for you because then you have to go back in and in the night when your baby surfaces from sleep, which all humans do, but then you have to reinsert that pacifier to help them relax again. That's what kids use when they don't have self-soothing skills. So what are self-soothing skills? Self-soothing skills might be sucking a thumb or a finger or rubbing a piece of material between thumb and finger or moaning or growing or rolling onto their side or positioning their body in their favorite position that they associate with falling asleep. Often those self-soothing skills don't evolve until three to four months of age that's what the research shows, that kids can self-soothe as early as three to four months of age, or until the known way of falling asleep is no longer available. So for example, I work with lots of kids that have pacifiers and they're eight or nine months and their parents are still going in to reinsert them three, four, five times a night. And that way of sleeping has become unsustainable for them. So they decide they need to do some sleep teaching to take away that pacifier at the beginning of the night so that child can learn how to do something different or position their body or moan or groan to help them relax into sleep so they're not calling out for that pacifier multiple times in the night. The other bummer about pacifiers is they can increase the risk of middle ear infections from the suction that's created in your inner ear. And prolonged use of the pacifier might lead to dental problems. But having done multiple searches on Google Scholar about that, I've found that there can be a variety of responses to that depending on what you're reading. I've had two thumb suckers. They both sucked their thumbs until they were over age two. And we saw different dentists that have many opinions about that type of thing. The other negative about a pacifier is there's some disputed evidence to show that having a pacifier could disrupt your breastfeeding, but the evidence on that is changing and I encourage you to look up the most recent findings um, to see if that is still the case. The big takeaway about pacifiers is if it's working for you, great, keep doing it. But if you're having to go in multiple times a night to reinsert it, you might have to ask yourself, is that pacifier a friend or foe? If you're looking for more helpful sleep tips, don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a baby sleep tip and come take our simple six question sleep quiz to help you with one simple thing you can do tonight um, regarding timing to help your little one sleep. And you can always grab our book on Amazon, The Helping Baby Sleep Method, The Art and Science of Teaching Your Baby to Sleep. See you next time.